Sierra, and today I am going to walk you through all of the steps that you need to know so that you can make a simple jean quilt. So before you ask me, why in the world are you making this? Didn't you just make a tutorial all about how to make a jean quilt? Yes, I did. That was 20 tips on how to make a jean quilt. I will link it up above as well as down below. But this tutorial is actually going to walk you through the actual steps that I took to make my simple jean quilt. So of course the first thing that you're going to need to do is grab all of your jeans that you have pre-washed and you are going to start cutting them up. You are going to cut out squares at five and a half inches by five and a half inches. If you're working with smaller jeans like kid size jeans, you may need to include the seam in with some of your jeans. So just make sure that this little seam isn't ending up on the edge of your square, but somewhere in the middle so that it's away from the outer edge. The quilt that we are actually going to make is going to be a lap quilt. Now you can make it larger or smaller than uh, this one here, but I'm going to give you everything for this particular quilt. Let's see if I can hold it up. Okay, it's a little hard to see the whole thing, but there it is. So this quilt is eight squares by nine squares. So you will need 72 five and a half inch by five and a half inch squares. I did not use all jean because this was an indoor lap quilt, so I wanted to add a little bit more color and dimension to it. So I actually cut out some cotton squares and I added some stabilizer to the back of my cotton squares. I liked adding that visual interest to my jean quilt, as you can see here. This pink is still jean, the white is still jean, everything else is jean. It's just the two different cotton fabrics here that I added stabilizer to for the back. However, if you are using stretchier jean material, I would recommend adding stabilizer to the back of those squares as well. I will link to the stabilizer that I used in the description down below. All right, so we've cut all of our five and a half inch squares and you will also need uh, enough flannel for a backing for this quilt. Now, when you start piecing all of your squares together, just lay them out. I liked to lay them out on my bed. I visualized where I had everything. I tried not to put squares with really thick edges like this. I tried not to put it on the edge of my quilt. I tried to keep these pieces in the center of my quilt. Later on when I'm adding the binding, I didn't want the extra bulk. So once you have all of your five and a half inch by five and a half inch squares laid out and in the nice order that you're looking for, now it's time to attach all of these pieces together. Make sure that you're using a jean needle. Make sure that you're using either an all-purpose thread or a 30 weight thread. And sew all of your seams at a quarter inch seam allowance. What I did was I folded my right row right sides together onto my left row and then I stacked them from the top down. That way when I put them through my sewing machine they all ended up in the correct order still. I chain pieced all of these little sections and then I would unsnip them and stack them right back up in the same order that they came in and I'd bring them back to my bed, I'd put them where they belonged and I'd move on to the next row until I ended up having all of those rows sewn together. So once you have sewn all of your rows, it'll be time to attach those rows together. Before you do that, what you can do is take each row to your iron and just press open all of those seams before you do the next step. It will be nicer on your sewing machine and nicer on your sewing machine needle. Or if you're concerned that your um, seams are not gonna line up and you're not gonna have a nice crisp meeting point, like this one here, let's say, then what you can do, and this is actually what I did, is you can put your seams, you can kind of link them together and lock them in place while you're sewing them together. I don't know if you can see that here, but this top seam I actually folded to the one side and the bottom I folded to the other side. But when you do this, and you're attaching all of your rows together, you do have to be careful to make sure that your next row that you're attaching on, so this one is going this way, you want this seam to stay this way. You don't want to interlock the seam now going the opposite way because then you've created a twist in your seam. 
So just be careful then if you choose to do this locking way of uh, sewing your seams together. Otherwise, just iron it all open and then iron those rows together. And again, do that at a quarter inch seam. Then once your entire top to your denim quilt has been put together, then it'll be time to iron all of those extra seams open. Oh, when you are ironing, just watch out for any stabilizer that you've added to the back of your fabric because if you're hitting it with a hot iron, it may gum up the back of your iron. So just be very careful when you're ironing open all of your seams that you are being a little bit more careful around those stabilizer squares. Then you can baste your quilt. So what I did for basting my quilt after ironing all of my seams open was I just laid it on a piece of flannel. It's a nice lap quilt. I didn't find that I needed batting because it's a nice heavyweight quilt from all of the jean fabric. It really will keep you warm. So to attach that flannel to your quilt top, what I did was I took two pieces of flannel. I just sewed them together so that I had a large enough piece of flannel. And I laid that right side face down and I took some painter's tape and I just attached it as taut as I could to my floor. I laid my quilt top on top of that and then I used my quilt pins to pin all around. I used as many quilt pins as I could and I attached the two together. And then I brought it to my sewing machine and I sewed a line along each seam. So I sewed along each one this way and then I sewed along each one this way. And that's how I put my quilt top together with my flannel backing. Oh, and one tip that I forgot to mention, when you're actually attaching your quilt top to the backing, extend your stitch length. It will save you a lot of headache and the smaller that stitch is, the more frustrating it's going to be going through those thicker seams. So just extend that stitch length to a nicer top stitch length and that will help you out a lot. I did the same thing on my binding as well. After that, I squared up the quilt itself. To do this, you will use your quilting ruler and you will focus on one corner of your quilt first. Lay your ruler along one edge a little bit further in from your fabric. You don't want to go outside of the fabric square and leave any of the flannel showing. You'll make your first cut and then you will angle it up to that corner to create a 90 degree angle. That 90 degree angle should line up with the corner of your ruler. Once you've done that, then follow that line all the way around your quilt. That way you're making those 90 degree corners on all four corners. Do not follow the lines of your quilt. They will trick you. They will make your quilt go wonky. So just rely on that quilter's ruler as your straight edge. Once you have squared up your entire quilt top with your quilter's ruler and your rotary cutter, then it is time to choose your binding. I cut my strips at two and a half inches. However, I recommend cutting your strips at three and a half inches. It'll give you a bit more of a wider binding, but it will be worth it because you're dealing with thicker seams on your outer edge and your thinner binding like this is just more complicated to do. I will link to my tutorial on how to add binding to projects up here as well as down below. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. Enjoy making your very own jean quilt. And as always, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Oh, and subscribe and hit that notification bell and thumbs up if you want. All right, talk to you later. Bye for now.